All right. Very good morning again. Good morning. <laughs> Thank you that I know that in the house of God, there are people. <laughs> uh, we are coming to the end of the series. We have not uh, known yet uh, in this year of Nehemiah. We are coming to chapter 11 now. And uh, just a few more weeks, I think just another one or two more, one sermon more uh, before we wrap up the, the whole series of Nehemiah, or rather the series of mandate uh, to rebuild the ministry, rebuild the work, the passion uh, that we have for the Lord. And I pray, uh, hope that uh, this will be an encouragement to us. You know, there is no success without an effort. Do you agree or not? You know, there's no success, there's no uh, victory without effort to put in. You know, if we do not put our effort in, uh, then it's very hard. Uh, we will not be so able to have uh, a, a success in life. Of course, we can argue about it. Uh, sometimes we put effort uh, at the end, then it's also down the drain. You know? uh, I'm talking about in general, if we put effort into it, uh, most of the time, we will be able to reap harvest. You know, so in... Uh, uh, in, in the series, uh, just the last few sermons, we talked about wow, actually a revival uh, or church uh, actually have quite a number of things uh, to put our effort into. You know, we have to work hard. You know, we have to we talk about you know, to commit ourselves to the Sabbath law. We commit ourselves uh, to uh, uh, the, the six things that we have talked about you know, last week. So all this effort, you know, we pray you know, as we put ourselves into it, uh, it will result in harvest in the lifetime that we have. So we see that so uh, coming to the end of this Nehemiah, we are seeing more so important you know, uh, to continue to sustain even the last, you know, the last message uh, for this uh, Nehemiah is going to be another, another round of challenge. But there's one more thing, apart from all the works, all the uh, requirements so-called uh, to for us to get involved, you know, uh, may, uh, last week I think, uh, it, it may uh, give us a little bit of burden, uh, but all these are not burden when we know the reason for it, when we participate in it. Uh, it makes our faith stronger, it makes our relation with God closer, and that is where the, the, the strength of the Lord uh, uh, becomes, uh, or the joy of the Lord becomes our strength. All right, so in comes to chapter 11 comes another one more important, uh, one more important, uh, or rather an interesting event turns out not to be expected uh, or not expected what, it, what I might think or what you may think. So because it uh, comes to 11, uh, is it not there's such a revival? You know? the, the temple is being rebuilt, the wall is being rebuilt, you know, and the law is being read, you see that the people come to repentance, people come to respond and return to the Lord. There's such a great sort of uh, celebration, you know, and, uh, and uh, you expect the city of God or Jerusalem be filled with people. But interestingly, or rather unexpectedly, you see that you know, Jerusalem, uh, the city itself, is rather empty. It's rather no one want to stay in Jerusalem. So it's, uh, it, it's uh, something that is not so out of ex you know, it's something not what we expected to happen. So what happened in chapter 11 and 12, you see that uh, uh, you see that there's an effort, a small portion of it, only actually just a few verses talking about this effort, because 11 and 12 the whole majority of it, 75% of it, uh, it is actually names. I'm not sure whether, uh, Auntie Ellen, you were glad or not just to read the four verses of names only. I did not ask her <laughs> to read uh, the whole list of the names. So, uh, so it's like son of who, son of who, son of who. Uh, so I, I guess, uh, you, of course, there are meanings towards it. You know, there are history behind all these names to give us... Uh, to give us an understanding, actually, their families. So later, I'll talk about it. All these names actually represent families, represent generations of people. Later, I'll talk about this. Huh? But uh, there's only one portion, one small portion, actually, in chapter 11, in the first four verses, talk about there was an effort. And so, an effort to resettle people back to Jerusalem. And I wish to talk about this. Okay, 
It's not that I don't want to talk about names. But then this exercise, you know, it's very important. And I feel that this is one thing that we can learn today or uh, how it will be you know, take up as a challenge. All right. You know, so we need to recognize this resettling people back to Jerusalem here. It is an intentional effort. It is not something out of voluntary or, or some or rather not, not out of a preference choice. Now, in chapter 11, you read there is an intentional effort, more than intentional effort, it's an intentional sacrifice to move into a new place or rather to move to another place that is not their preferred choice. So today, I'm not sure whether you would like to do this or not. Would you want to move into a new place or another place? That is not your preferred choice. Uh, I'm not sure the Camel students here, when you filled up your choice of uh, where you want to go, or after this, uh, after this, uh, your, after Camel, uh, your choice of college or choice of university where you want to go, now you're feeling first. I don't know, lah. Yeah, you know, UC Sudang, lah, UPM, lah, USM, lah. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, then at the end, uh, you you got UMS. <laughs> uh, uh, probably not your preferred choice. So, oh, uh, would you go? Would you go? Would you relocate yourself, even not to a place that is not your first choice? So this is something that is happening here, and we'd like to, oh. Uh, uh, there is something for us to learn, I believe, to encourage every one of us. You see that now, verse 1 and 2 here. Uh, let me read it to you the first. Uh, now the leaders of the people of uh, uh, leaders of the people set up in Jerusalem, the rest of the people cast lots, bring one out of every ten of them to live in Jerusalem, the holy city, while the remaining nine will stay in their own towns. The people commanded all who volunteered to live in Jerusalem. Now, what's the context here? Now, let me you know, give you a context or history a little bit so that you understand what is happening around. Now, uh, why is it so important? Why Nehemiah make an effort to bring people, you know, to, to even cast lots, you know, to move people back to Jerusalem and stay? Now, uh, the context of that, the culture of that time is that city of Jerusalem, it is the city of God. Is it not? You know? It is city that God, uh, uh, it belongs to God, city of God, ma, Jerusalem. So in that particular culture or that particular history, the city, it, can, it is being, it is a direct translate or direct reflection of who that God is. So the bigger the city it is, the bigger the God it is. No. The more advanced of the city it is, the bigger the God you know, it is. So that is the culture. You know, so that's why they built you know, the temple big. They built the wall big and high. Why? To represent the God. So in, uh, in, in, in the Bible, it's also very similar to this. You read in Psalms, you read, you read in, even in the Old Testament, you know, it say that God defended uh, Jerusalem. You know, God defended because it's a city of God. So that is all the more so important that the city of God is populated. The city of God built you know, in a way so massive to represent who is this God or who is this Yahweh. So that is the context of the day that demands such a building or such an arrangement. Okay, and uh, so if we are talking about, does it relate to us? Oh, how could we still use this kind of principle? I guess, uh, no. Uh, if I'm going to ask, uh, if you're going to, let's say, uh, put a principle and learn something today, uh, meaning say, should we build our church big? Should we build our church, you know, a church compound with such the latest technology, you know, instead of just projector, you know, we put in LED, instead of uh, uh, all this uh, fluorescent light, we put in the, uh, those moving head, uh, all this, uh, the most high-tech you know, uh, equipment uh, to project this uh, magnificent building that people come in and say, wow, there's a big impression, you know, there's first impression. You know, should we do that or not? 
Of course, I, I do not want to ask a uh, statistic here, uh, your opinion, uh, because uh, half of you would may disagree with me. <laughs> half of you may, yeah, yeah, the young little ones are, yes, yes, LED, LED, you know. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the rest probably, ah, yeah, should not, uh, you know, this is not so uh, important. You know, what is more important, we must use money, uh, send people to mission, uh, do more mission work, do more this, and uh, do ministry. So, yeah, they start kind of dividing opinions, which both it is, I feel, it is not wrong. Lah, okay? We should do more mission. We should invest more you know, uh, into mission work, into welfare, uh, into uh, church planting, you know, uh, rather than decorate uh, a very beautiful building already you know, that we have. Uh, rather than decorate it, use the finance you know, to do something else. Now, let me uh, put it as it is first. Lah. You know, I think what we can learn uh, from here is that uh, the impression of first impression, the first impression is important, is it not? You know, uh, there's a saying, all right? The first impression make the last impression. Okay? And uh, if you have a good first impression, uh, then your, your impression is, will last. I was just, <laughs> I was just a member just returned from uh, another, uh, another, another place, another place, another place, okay, another place. No, that uh, Sunday or oh, Sunday in the worship, oh, because of the traffic, all this oh, was late, lah, because traffic was late, lah, a family walked in, uh, walked in the church. Uh. You know what? The ushers are uh, in the church are uh, saying that, uh, yeah, yeah, in the church, in the church, oh, you know, that uh, stopped them from going into the church oh, because service started already. The ushers tell, the, tell this family uh, saying that, uh, you know, what, you go in like this, are uh, you going to disturb the sermon? You're going to disturb the flow of the service? No, 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 no. Can I encourage you to come to the following service? Wow! Oh, this is the family that who wants to go to this church. Our first impression is like this. What would you think? What would you think, the impression, for all the churches? They will probably say, wow, like that one, all churches also like that, late a little bit, do not allow you to go in. Okay? Just to let you know, our door is not locked, it's just closed only. You want to come in, you come in, please. <laughs> all right. Uh, uh, so, then, uh, then, then they, they decided to go to another church, you see, that's nearby. Nearby, there's just another church. Okay? They were late also because of distance, no? distance, they had to walk over last minute arrangement. They walk over, you know, and that church, uh, when they walk in, uh, they have not even reached the doorstep. Uh, ushers come in and welcome already. Oh, oh welcome you this morning. I'm so glad you to have you here. Come, come, come. Let me make a way for you. you know? Come and sit with us. And, uh, and the whole hall is packed and yet they're still able to find two or three places for this family. What is your impression? Wow. That impression will last. See? So, we, it, it, there, there is some lesson. There is some lesson about here building the first impression. Okay? Now, we'll put that there first. Later, we'll come back whether, you no, know, should we really invest uh, into... No, beautify the church, equip it with the best thing. No, all this now you put a stop here first. I'll come back uh, a little bit later. Now, um, but uh, what what I want to what I want to stress this morning or pick up this incident, it is it is the effort of Nehemiah placing people back into Jerusalem, and. Uh, and uh, the, the principle is that this group of people who are being placed back, uh, it is not their first choice, you see. It is not their preference. Why they do not want to go back? You know, they have, you read commentaries again, you look into it, there will be probably quite a number of reasons why people do not want to move back to Jerusalem. And one of it is the main thing of it is that because they wanted to stay back in their ancestral homes. You know, Jerusalem is actually down south, you know, and uh, the ancestral homes are probably come from Bethlehem, uh, a little bit nearer, lah, or Galilee, up north. 
Oh, so when people return from Babylon to here, they choose to stay back in their ancestral homes, rather in Jerusalem, which is down south. It is quite a hilly, hilly place. And uh, I, there are further other reasons that we do not know. Lah, huh? Possible that uh, if uh, any country is going to attack, it probably attack Jerusalem first. So, and, uh, and all these things. So people do not want to move back. And this was the situation that was happening. So people who move back, you know, this group of people, either by casting lot or volunteer themselves, there is a principle here, is that they have made a choice to move back out of, even though it's not their preference. They made a commitment. Why? Because the heart, the city of God, needs to be populated with people. At that context, huh? at that context, no? it needs to be populated with people to reflect the image of God. And they make the commitment to return. Even though it's not their first choice, not their preference, they will have probably a better home somewhere else, but they make the commitment. So if we look at this lesson, what significant that we can have it this today. I believe it is a huge, you know, significant, important for us to realize that when we go to a place, that what is the reason that you are there? You know, what's the purpose that you move to a new place? You know, I feel that you know, Laoban probably will be very... Uh, able to identify with this a lot easier. Huh? You know, because um, probably many of us here are not local. Is it not? I'm not local here. You, know? you move in here. You, know? you move in here for a purpose. Okay? For what purpose? Okay? So, uh, can, can I just get a rough statistic? Huh? How many of you are here? They are not local here. Um, doesn't, you, know, you are not born here. You, know? you, are, you came in. Uh, be it 20 years ago, 20 years ago, or 30 years ago, uh, you came in uh, to Labon. Right? Uh, can I just see a show of hands? Uh, yeah, you're quite, no, quite a number. Wow, KML, you're all born here. You're not born, no? you're not born yesterday one more. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now, okay, can I have a show? Hey, you're not born here, you move in. You move in, whether 20, 30 years you have been living here already. All right, okay, okay. How about now you're locally born and breed here, born and breed? Well, English service are about 50 50. Huh? Oh, if you minus off this, uh, camera student probably like, no, uh, 70 30, you know, okay. Now, if I ask this question, why are you here? Those who are not locally, you move to Labuan. Why are you here? Our oh, parents. <laughs> parents, because parents born uh, give birth to you here. What is the most common? What's the most common answer, or you will answer? Why are you here? For work, is it not? Is it not true? You come in for work. Okay? It is not so wrong. You come in for work. You need to earn a living you know, to support your life. You need to earn a living for a family. And uh, subsequently, probably you start the family here and generation that will follow. Okay, you, 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 you came in with a purpose to work. That is a purpose. Now, uh, but the more important question I would like to ask you know, is that if work finishes, what next? If your work finishes already, what next? What next? What next? If you don't mind, like, you don't mind, no? What next? Find new job. <laughs> let's, say, let's say you really complete your work here already. Uh, what next? Anyone? What is the most common? Go back. Is it not very common? No? You spend probably 30 years here or for your job here, you retired here. What next? Your job finished, your work finished. What next? You probably had this planning to retire back to your hometown. 
all right? Or back wherever you come from. Now, please hear me. I am not, <laughs> I'm not against you going back or leaving. Uh, I'm not against of this anything. You have this planning. You know, after you complete your work here, you decide to return to wherever you come from, uh, you, you have my blessing. Okay, I, I'm not commenting. I'm not against anything. But, however, the question more important to us in our lives is there more than life than just work? When work finish, it is that all. Is it that all? Life, it is just like that. Or have we ever asked a question that why are we here? Or why God has placed me here? What's the purpose that God has placed me here? Yes, to find a job. Yes, to find a work. But when work finishes, what next? So if we are not able to discover why we are here in the purpose of God, then our life is just revolving around work per se, which is very important. I'm not saying that you do not, should not work, okay? But it's very important. But what next? What is next? The people who are moved back to Jerusalem, it is not just for the reason of finding work. It's a reason to look at the vision, to know that repopulate Jerusalem is to reflect God's image. It is to reflect God's glory in the city of God. So when we are here, what is the purpose that God has given to us? Have we known, do we, have we, have we known ourselves? Or have we asked God, you know, when we are here in Labuan, God, what do you want us to do or what do you want me to do apart from just work? Because if we discover the purpose that God has for us, when work finish and still so much more to do God's work, then there's a commitment to stay in. There's a commitment willing to move or uproot from a place to a new place for the sake of God's ministry. So here, may I put forth this challenge, you know, not just only those who are in, you know, coming from abroad, you know, but all the more locally, you know, you're born and you're bred here, you know, yeah, you are here the longest possible means. So, what is God saying in your life? Or what's God's purpose that you place you here in Labuan? What is God trying to do with your life? So, may I put forth this challenge? Why are you here? Have you asked God, you know, why are you here in Labuan? Is it because God has a purpose for you? Is it God has a purpose for you to rebuild, to build the house of God? So you see that, you know, the next thing, the next thing, you know, there is, always, there is a purpose when God, you know, or rather Nehemiah, re, you know, resettled people in. There is a purpose. Just as God resettled some of us into a new place. In this season of life, it is here in Labuan. In the next season of life, I don't know. You need to ask God. Probably in another place. But it always comes with a purpose. Nehemiah, a group of people who went back to Jerusalem, they knew their purpose. But do we know our purpose here this morning? Why are we here? People who move back to Jerusalem, they start to rebuild the house of God. That's why all the names come in. Uh, uh, this family do what? That family do what? So the whole 75% uh, talk about these generations. It's not just about this family. No, this family is since the time of Joshua, since the time of uh, who and who and who. You see that generations of people move back to Jerusalem with a purpose to rebuild the house of God. To rebuild the ministry that was one neglected. So when we talk about so, uh, moving into a new place with a purpose, when we know this very purpose, and then there is a sacrifice, you know, there's a commitment to rebuild the house of God together. 
Rebuilding the house of God together is not just a one-man show. Right? I think uh, Kenneth, Kenneth uh, in a prayer conference uh, reminded us, God is not searching for a superman. God is not searching for a superwoman. But God is searching for each an individual who is willing, who is committed in their own strength, whatever gifting that they have to come together to build the house of God. That's why you see the list of names, so many names, so many family, but in different parts of the service, different parts in the temple, different parts playing different role in Jerusalem. So, it's building the house of God. It is uh, together what you and I, we can offer. Small little things that we can, that we can come together to give. So when you talk about so sustaining the revival, you know, sustaining a spiritual revival in us, it requires our participation. You and I. It is not just you know, one person kick. <laughs> one leg kicking, that's a phrase saying, no, but you and I involve small little things, small parts in our ministry, whether in the ushers, whether in the, in the worship team, in the cell groups, in a prayer counseling, in a youth ministry, in a children ministry, in all cell groups, each and every one. When God wants to rebuild the house of God, when God restored the restoring the war, God did not just cause you know, a finger snap, uh, immediately the war start to rebuild. No. Who did he call? The Lord called Jerubabah to rebuild the temple. The Lord called Nehemiah to rebuild the war. Ezra to bring back a group of people. So God called each and every one, you and I, to be involved. In this mandate, rebuilding the ministry of God. Can you encourage one another? Look at the person next to you. No need to say anything. Huh? No need to say anything. Just not. <laughs> not. It is so significant for us, each and every one of us, to obey what God has called us. Your purpose here in this season of life, here in Labuan, what God has called you to be. What God has called you when you move in here in Labuan. What's the purpose that God has called you? So, of course, no, uh, I personally not uh, from Labuan. I only hear like probably the youngest, not the youngest, uh, Camel, probably the youngest. Okay, they came in like uh, just a few months ago. I came in like five years ago. Okay, and uh, no, I, always I, I, I want to honour and say thank you for those who have been here for many years. You have started your life here, you move in here, and uh, your involvement in church. You know, and uh, uh, you are here, uh, not just to work. May I encourage you, may I challenge you. You are not here just to earn a living. But today, let us move beyond this and to discover what's God's purpose for me here to in Labuan, to have a purpose in life, what God has called us. If God has given us a job here, given us a business here, able to set up you know, a business, can I call it business empire here, uh, the Lord blessing, what's the reason? There's always a purpose. Not, let us not just live our life, just revolve around work because when work finishes, then there's no more meaning. There's no more reason in Labon. So that's why people leave. Like I say again, oh, let me say I'm not against people leaving. But at least let us discover why am I here for this season of time. I want to challenge all of us to commit ourselves to the work of the Lord here in the church. So if watch each and every one of us commit ourselves to the service of the Lord, commit ourselves in serving each family, then our church will be, is it not, become a very lively, you know, 
whether there's a worship going on, we are passionate about the ministry here, then the church will be lively. So when church is lively, when people come in and see the shape of the church, the, 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 the wonders, you say, the, of the church, is it not this reflects the image of God? Is this not reflect the glory of God? So that's why, no matter how we watch, how, no matter how much we want to talk about building first impression, important, not important, it has its lesson. Because it shows also the glory, the image of God. So we need everyone to participate together. We need everyone to come to serve together. And I pray this will be your conviction. All the more, if you are here only for a year or two, you know, this, is a, this is a season of time you are here. I hope that you can be convicted or even be greater convicted for those who are local here to know that God has placed you here for a specific purpose and reason to build the house of God. Amen. And that let your work be able to facilitate you know, for us to reach out to the people that is around us, to the world. So, uh, uh, this is my challenge. You know, I, I didn't manage to call uh, Git Yegi, who was actually sharing a testimony uh, in Saturday. I felt a little bit, uh, because I only gave her three hours preparation uh, on my way back from, uh, from uh, uh, Manumbuk uh, in a ferry, I thought, uh, because I heard about her story. And uh, uh, because it's a kind of a last minute thing, uh, so, uh, but then I decided to call her uh, uh, at three o'clock while I was, hey, two something, two something, while I was still in the ferry. Okay, call her to share a testimony. What is her testimony? Her testimony is about her life making a choice. She came in 2000, 2002 or 2003, 2000, year 2000, uh, came in year 2000 uh, as, a, as a uni student and after completing her studies, she has a choice to make, to stay or to move back. At that period of time, she was involved in this uh, uh, a group of brothers and sisters in Christ, involved in ministry and she felt that the conviction of the Lord to call her to stay. So she stay on based on this conviction that the Lord has called her because she was involving in this campus ministry and the Lord has given her a purpose and she stayed on until now. So you see, live a life with a purpose not just about work. Let it be Labuan, a place that you experience God the most. Amen. Amen. Can I come worship team to minister to us? I'm not sure all of us saw here, how long have you been here? Uh, what's the purpose that you're here in Labuan? Is it only for work? You know, if you are thinking this is only a workplace, may I challenge you this morning to go beyond that reason. It is work here only. Then, personally, I feel it's very sad because when work finishes, there's nothing left. God is not a God that uses us and just dumb us away. There is a purpose in our lives. And I pray that we will discover God's purpose for us here in Labuan. Through the work that God has given or through the work that is prepared for you, that you are able to discover how we can build the house of God together. Amen. Amen. So as we sing the response song later, I encourage you uh, to pray to God. You were seeking I'm not sure whether you're in uh, any crossroad or not, uh, whether I'm leaving or not leaving. Uh, just in case uh, you are in uh, this crossroad, uh, 
I, I don't know anything about that, so please <laughs> do not. <laughs> uh, but uh, this is the message for this week. Okay. Probably it's timely for us to think, to reflect. Has God called me to remain? Or has God called me to leave to a new destination? Even then, I pray. Or oh, I challenge you to pray. What is God's purpose to move you back or to leave Lombok? Not just because work has finished, I pack my bag and leave. So, as we come before the Lord in worship, as we respond, oh, pray, pray. Amen. Amen. Come, let's stand together. Let's spend a time, a little bit of time, to focus in the Lord.